Dan Kujo, aka Toku King, was being led across the world forest by the Saba Saber. Saba had begun to sense another artifact a couple of days prior. He and Dan had been searching for it ever since. Are we getting close, Saba? I'm not sure. Every time I feel as if we are close, the object seems to move off again. Maybe someone has already found it. It could be that Kaijin again. I certainly hope not. As they pondered, a strange creature curiously peeked around a tree. It was a brown, Sasquatch-like beast. His name was Skunk Ape. Sadly, the other monsters gave him this name due to his less than pleasant odor. An odor that Dan had begun to notice. What is that smell? It smells like someone washed rotting feet in skunk-scented kerosene. Dan and Saba slowly turned their heads to peer at the ape-like kaiju. Skunk Ape saw that they had noticed him and jumped out from his hiding place in shock. A kaiju! I won't let it stop us from finding the relic! Toku Change! Dan spun his Toku Changer and transformed into the Red Ronin, Toku King. Saba flew into Toku King's hand as they charged at the strange beast. But as Toku King raised the Saba Saber to strike Skunk Ape, something strange happened. The monster did not try to fight back. It didn't try to block. It didn't even try to run away. When Toku King raised Saba for the strike, all Skunk Ape did was cower. He was afraid. When Toku King saw this, he froze in place. What are you doing, Toku King? The creature is wide open! Before Toku King could answer, a blue blast of energy shot between Toku King and Skunk Ape, separating them. Ah! What is that? Toku King turned to see an incredible sight. Several feet away stood an imposing kaiju. The creature had thick brown scales covering its body. Large spines ran down its back and its long tail. Dan recognized the monster from the history books he often read. It was Godzilla, the king of the monsters. But this Godzilla was different than the one that ravaged the Japanese coast in days past. Over the centuries, kaiju had become smaller. With the world populated mostly by monsters, they had to evolve to a smaller size in order to fit on our small blue and green planet. This Godzilla stood at around seven feet tall, which still allowed him to look down on Toku King and Saba. Godzilla motioned for Skunk Ape to flee, and the ape-like monster ran off into the forest. As soon as Skunk Ape was clear, Godzilla shot a blue fireball at our hero. Toku King slashed through the atomic orb to stop the attack. Godzilla charged Toku King and slammed him into a nearby rock. The rock cracked upon impact. Toku King used both his legs to kick the Monster King off of him. Saba fired lasers at Godzilla but they had little effect. I'm going to try the Drag Saber! Toku King summoned the Drag Saber and brought it across Godzilla's chest. Flames sputtered from the blade as it made contact. The kaiju roared in pain. The Monster King brought one claw down onto the Drag Saber and brought his other claw across Toku King's masked face. Toku King fell to the ground and lost his grip on the drag saber. Godzilla kicked the sword away, but Saba flew back into Toku King's hands to replace it. Godzilla charged at the two of them, but Toku King seemed hesitant. He did not raise Saba up to defend himself. Dan, what are you doing? Toku King put both of his arms at his sides, and it seemed as if Godzilla was going to trample him. But right before Godzilla would have slammed into our hero, he came to a hard stop. The monster made a low rumbling in its chest 
as it stared at Toku King. Wait, I do not understand. Why doesn't the creature attack? Godzilla only attacked us because he was defending that ape kaiju. It was just a peaceful creature. I might have even been the first human it ever saw. Once the creature was gone and I lowered my weapon, Godzilla no longer had a reason to fight. In that case, I suppose we were in the wrong for attacking without being provoked. I am sorry, noble creature. Godzilla grunted in acknowledgement. The kaiju reached behind its back and removed something from between its scoots. It appeared to be some type of flute. No, not a flute, but a dagger. The dragon dagger. Saba, look! It's the artifact we were searching for. It really was moving around. But why does this kaiju have it? I suppose we'll never know. Godzilla held the dagger out in front of Toku King. It was as if the monster wanted him to have it. Our hero slowly reached out and took the dagger from the monster king. Godzilla nodded at Toku King and turned around to leave, disappearing into the forest around them. Toku King was created by Paul Kelly Jr. Starring Paul Kelly Jr., Samson West, and Jesse Booth. Edited by Paul Kelly Jr. Written by Paul Kelly Jr. Executive Producer Chris Winter. Music by Letterbox. Special thanks to Ian McNeil, Cameron Gowen, Eddie Chang, and all our donors and listeners. Please follow the links in the podcast description to donate and support the show.